You've been a big proponent for cannabis for a very, very long time. What was the push to get into the business yourself? What was the final decision there? Well, I talked about that earlier when I said how cannabis saved my life. Not mine directly, but my wife. We've been married 49 years next month, 50 next year if we both make it, and that's a, quite an achievement. And uh, I almost lost her because she developed late in life epileptic seizures. She was seizing two to three times a week and pharma could do nothing about it. Went to the doctors, put her on four different seizure medicines. None of them worked. They all had horrible side effects. We, out of desperation, drove. We had friends in Colorado and they decriminalized out there. We drove out there, we got the three drops under the tongue. She has not had a seizure since. Why did I get in the business? Because I don't want any Minnesota family to have to go through what my wife and I went through. This stuff needs to be readily available. Uh, in fact, I've made the quote, the people who outlawed marijuana, they should go to jail for outlawing it, for keeping it from us. Because as my friend Tommy Chong, you know who Tommy Chong is? Good, you're awful young, that's why I had to ask. <laughs> no, no, but, no, I'm uh, familiar. My friend Tommy Chong, who knows a lot, and believe me, he ain't his character. <laughs> he told me they make a big mistake when they separate marijuana into recreational and medical. Mm. He said the whole plant is medical. Mm. Those that smoke it for the euphoric feeling in the head are doing it for mental health. Right. Like post-traumatic stress and things of that nature. Right. So the entire plant, it's a medical plant. That's why I'm in this business now. It's my only focus now. It's the only thing I'll do a public appearance on. Nothing else. I'm trying to retire. Right. <laughs> but this is a, a business that my son has created, and I'll do whatever it takes to make it successful. Yeah, you pointed out something interesting about how you can't put your likeness onto this product. It, could you explain that for me? Because that was puzzling to me. The, lo the laws. They won't let me put my likeness, like when I was light beer from Miller, I could do national ads, stand there, hold the product, everything. I could not put my face on anything because of the laws. All we ask is treat us equal to alcohol. I'm Why do we get special treatment, special laws? Because we have to break this stereotype about cannabis and end this garbage about something that is a positive in so many ways. I'm living in Wisconsin right now. We're a bit behind, as you said earlier. I'm curious about Good. your thoughts on- that means we're gonna make all the money that you get on fireworks. <laughs> all the money we waste over there and give you on fireworks, we're gonna now recoup on cannabis. It's a balance now. <laughs> gotcha. It'll balance out now. Uh, I'm curious about your thoughts on Delta 8, Delta 10, THCA, those other alternatives to cannabis. Or not cannabis, alternatives to uh, like marijuana specifically. What about that? Yeah, like what are your thoughts on Delta 8 and Delta 10? Well, all it is is getting the THC from hemp instead because that ain't against the law. As soon as that, as soon as next year, we won't be doing that no more. You can go right to the normal marijuana plant then. It's just more hoops, you know, rather than just doing a full-fledged legal and do this. I guess they felt the need to put it into steps, you know. It's like when I went up there to fight. You know who stopped it in Minnesota? The Republicans. Now, aren't they supposed to be the party of business? Well, this was the only business during the pandemic that grew. Right. It got bigger. Right. Well, you'd think the Republicans would be on board for that, wouldn't they, if they're the party of business? See, they're not really the party of business. They're full of bullshit, you know? And, uh, and so the point, you know, uh, this is money waiting to happen. Like I tried to explain, the ship's leaving the harbor and we're sitting on the dock. Absolutely. And, and now Wisconsin's on the dock, at least we're on the boat. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good you know, way to put We got to circle boat, back yeah. around for you guys yeah. now. At some point comes. You know. <laughs> um, so and I, the Dakotas, I doubt them will ever do it, them rednecks. <laughs> 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 um, 
So I grew up in Oregon most of my life, and that's where you got your start, in Portland. Do you miss the Pacific Northwest at all? I didn't start nothing in Portland. You mean wrestling? Yeah, yeah. I started in Kansas City. Oh. Why did I, I read something in Portland, no? I went to Portland. That right. was my second territory. Okay. I started in Kansas City. My I had my I first match, Wichita Century 2 Auditorium, Wichita, Kansas. I wrestled Omar Atlas that night. I had my last match in Winnipeg, Canada, and I wrestled Tony Atlas that night. So I thought it was the perfect time to retire. I started wrestling an Atlas, and I finished wrestling an Atlas. <laughs> Seemed like I went the circle. You did help establish a lot of things in Portland, though, in your career. Yeah. Uh, do you miss the Pacific Northwest at all? Oh, I'll, well, I'll, I'll miss the Pacific... I'll miss the Pacific Northwest because they don't have a sales tax. Mm. Uh, wrestlers used to always go there and buy their cars because you could buy a car and not pay sales tax on it. It would save you thousands of dollars. Yeah. So everyone would get booked there, buy a car, and then leave. Uh, last question I have is so. Uh, and this, Although this is I do board. support sales taxes, I think they're a better tax than an income tax mm. for all them. In fact, I've been an advocate for the national sales tax. Abolish the income tax and go to a national sales tax. That's because that way no one could cheat. Everybody buys stuff and all taxes would be paid business to government. They're already doing it. And you know what that would do for you? You'd never face an audit again. Right. Because all your taxes would be paid business to government. It makes too much sense. That's why they won't do it. Because it makes too much sense sense makes too much sense i hear you i hear you uh last question it's a bit off the wall did you ever smoke on the set of predator or running man or demolition man any of those movies no 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 okay i thought i, would, I thought i would ask no um could you rank the and i never movies? smoked when i was governor right okay i was yeah i was just curious but about in between started. yeah when i wrestled yes okay you're in pain all the time right you need to sleep at night you're in, on an airplane the next day going to the next town. It's a hell life. Mm. And cannabis, I'd rather be taking that for pain than opiates. I hear you. I hear you on that. You know, um, one, the great thing about cannabis, and the kids are learning it, you can't overdose. And as far as drinking the THC, well, you can drink as much of it as you want and you ain't going to get sick. How many times you've been out between the house throwing up from alcohol? And the best part, there's no hangovers. The next day you get up, you feel fine, you can go to work. Your head ain't pounding, you're not dehydrated, you're not got the dry heaves the next day, all those fun things from alcohol. Very fun. Cannabis things. is so superior to alcohol, it's laughable. Laughable. I like that. I like that. It um, is. It is. Cannabis is so much superior to alcohol. Very Not last even thing. a comparison. Very last thing. Could you rank uh, the three, or I guess just my three favorite movies, yours, Predator, Running Man, and Demolition Man? Could you rank those three on like your enjoyment on set? Predator, ju the, just the order you set them. That order? I like Predator the best. Running Man would be second. Demo Man would be third. Right on.